someone threw a ball, and he's out. Oh, oh, they stare each other down. Looks like James Madison won the rush. Everyone's shocked, I'm sure. Saginaw Valley adopts its traditional defensive move in the corner. Got lots of people hiding. James Madison is playing slow so far. Saginaw Valley's throw. They, uh, lots of feints and a throw. Almost. Good toss of the ball over. Seems like a reasonable thing to do. And, oh, almost. Oh, oh, that was dirty. That poor man. We should review the concussion protocol. I plan to be co-announcing this with Chris Hess, but he unfortunately was not able to make it, so you will all have to be stuck with my commentary. <laughs> Nothing has happened in a bit. Oh, something happened. Didn't realize that the court was over there, too. This is probably not going to be one of the better uh, broadcasts, but we're going to have fun with it. Oh, that guy is out. He got hit. Something, something. Are they, they going to throw? Looks like some excitement over here. Block. It's a good job keeping the ball. You don't really want them to get that back. The big key when you play against James Madison is to try to not let them keep getting all the balls back because that rarely ends well for you. They throw very hard. It does not feel good. A good cross shot. It was a good try. It's always good to try to keep teams honest, keep them out of the center. Good catch. Very strong catch. It does good things. Good tag. This is the marquee match of the Saturday games. Saginaw Valley and James Madison. Saginaw Valley being one of the traditional powerhouses of the country and a former national champion. James Madison is the rising star. They're very shiny. That was a very sexy dodge. I liked it. He probably liked it too. It would not have felt good if he didn't. That's a lot of feints. Oh, two nice, nice tags. It's very hard to deal when someone keeps throwing all those feints. You never know when the real one's going to actually show up. I'm going to experiment with trying to get camera angles that don't suck. Kind of difficult from this vantage point. Getting dangerously close to a shot clock violation there, but they got the throw off. Always good. James Madison, arguably the most athletic team in the country. Every one of them looks like they could have played in a different sport if they had chosen, but we love them for playing dodgeball instead. Very, very nice catch by Saginaw Valley. Keeps them from being on the 10 count, which is never a fun time. A little confusion about where he's going. Oh, he's out. All right. Good dodging. Dodging is, in fact, one of the keys of the game. It's not called hit ball, although that would be a very interesting game. I'm sure he is very grateful that he dodged that, because it looked like he might have lost a shoulder otherwise. And good block. 
Good block. Advancing. It's like debating throwing. Communication on the court. Throw. It was caught. Between points, I may try to find a better angle for you all watching at home. It would be hard to find a worse one. Saginaw Valley, more on the defensive than I expected. Hopefully they can get back in this. James Madison's got to be feeling happy. One of the real strengths of their team has been that most of them have a great catch. Great catch by Saginaw Valley. A good block. Nice footwork on that dodge. Thinking, thinking, oh, dangerous. Good block. James Madison begins to push up. Team throw. Good block, good block. This game is staying very competitive. Excellent dodge by the Saginaw Valley captain. Oh. And that's a prime example of why you have to stay paying attention because people are actively trying to hit you. And when you're not paying attention, that is much easier to do. Rose, looks like it missed. I can't tell either. Oh! Oh, snap! Dun -dun -dun -dun. Good catch by James Madison. And that was my finger, in case anyone wondered. Another tag. Saginaw Valley could be sa changing the momentum of this match. I'm gonna sit down again, try to get one of these going. Saginaw Valley pushing up. Throw, miss. James Madison is passing the balls between them in order to get all their gunners to throw. Catch tag. One player comes in, two players go out. That is a game that James Madison should be willing to play as they have a slight numeric advantage right now. Saginaw Valley doing some interesting teamwork over here. Let's see what they do. It's like a team throw. Ooh. James Madison surges forward. Cross shot. And no hit. Saginaw Valley pushes up. Excellent block. It's very good teamwork. Covers each other's flanks. Probably should not turn your back when you're running away. Has the potential to be painful. It appears that that right hand side is kind of carrying it for Saginaw right now. It's like the left is kind of hanging out in the back. Oh, and that could be bad for them. The pause. See what happens in the time out here. Catch could swim, change the motion. And a block, not a particularly hard throw. Those are the ones that are easiest to block. Getting close to that back line. 
doing a very good job of switching up the protection to make sure that someone is blocked for at all times. Calling throws on him. James Madison runs forward. Throws. Can't really see what happened. Doesn't look like anyone's walking out. Oh, no, never mind. Someone got hit. It was him. Saginaw Valley now has gotten a balls over of its own. This is going to be very interesting to see what the lone Saginaw Valley player will choose to do. He has all the balls and all the options. My guess is that he'll choose to throw one. Probably at a James Madison player. Once that happens, we'll find out if they catch it, if it hits him, or if it misses. Those are the only possibilities. Throw was very high and did not connect with any of them, as no one is 15 feet tall, even though that was probably only like seven. good strategy to throw high at the wall. Make sure that they don't get rebounds, but the downside is if you don't keep the ball playable, you run into this exact situation where, yet again, James Madison has all of the balls, and you are now a target with no friends to distract you. What can be going through this brave warrior's mind right now as he faces what could possibly be a not so glorious end. And they all missed! He is alive! He is alive! I don't know if he's a religious man, but after that he should consider becoming one if he isn't. James Madison makes a throw. It does not hit. Eight. And the question, is that a playable ball? Does appear to be so. The real downside of being on the 10 count versus the 15 is, by definition, you have to throw more often than the team on the 15 count. Well placed throw, you don't really want to put it in the bread basket. Makes for an easy catch. Clutch! Saginaw Valley back in the game. Ball's over again. I might have spoken preemptively, but with double the players, double the possibility for a catch. Which has to be a very encouraging thought for Saginaw Valley. Saginaw Valley, staring down James Madison. One player is out. Never mind, both players are out. By my powers of rapid arithmetic, James Madison has taken the first point. Here, catch could swim, change the motion. And a block, not a particularly hard throw. Those are the ones that are easiest to block. Getting close to that back line. Doing a very good job of switching up the protection to make sure that someone is blocked for at all times. Calling throws on him. James Madison runs forward. Throws. Can't really see what happened. Doesn't look like anyone's walking out. Oh, no, never mind. Someone got hit. It was him. Saginaw Valley now has gotten a balls over of its own. This is going to be very interesting to see what the lone Saginaw Valley player will choose to do. He has all the balls and all the options. My guess is that he'll choose to throw one. Probably at a James Madison player. Once that happens, we'll find out if they catch it if it hits him or if it misses. Those are the only possibilities. Throw was very high and did not connect with any of them, 
as no one is 15 feet tall, even though that was probably only like seven. A good strategy to throw high at the wall, make sure that they don't get rebounds, but the downside is if you don't keep the ball playable, you run into this exact situation where, yet again, James Madison has all of the balls, and you are now a target with no friends to distract you. What can be going through this brave warrior's mind right now as he faces what could possibly be a not so glorious end? And they all missed! He is alive! He is alive! I don't know if he's a religious man, but after that he should consider becoming one if he isn't. James Madison makes a throw. It does not hit. Eight. And the question, is that a playable ball? It does appear to be so. The real downside of being on the 10 count versus the 15 is by definition, you have to throw more often than the team on the 15 count. Well placed throw, you don't really want to put it in the bread basket. Makes for an easy catch. Oh! Clutch! Saginaw Valley back in the game. Ball's over again. I might have spoken preemptively. But with double the players, double the possibility for a catch. Which has to be a very encouraging thought for Saginaw Valley. Saginaw Valley. Staring down James Madison. One player is out. Never mind, both players are out. By my powers of rapid arithmetic, James Madison has taken the first point.